Welcome to the GCN Tech Show with me, Alex, and Ollie. Welcome to the GCN Tech Show! Well, I'm excited for this one, Alex. Wait, wait, wait. That comes later on. Hold up. Okay. That's later on. This week, we've got hot tech, including the world's lightest saddle, your upgrades, the bike vault, and our main talking point. Why are some bikes so expensive? Well, well, hold on. They come later on still. Get the lid back on that. Boy. been the first time since you've done the tech show with me. And Mate, I haven't done the tech show in a long time, so I'm so excited to get started. Well, we start with poll from last week, so let's do it. Go, let's get the results. So last week we asked what people thought of the Spico Aero breakaway bars. And what did you think of it, Alex? Well, it's not about me, it's about the viewers. It they is bought. about the viewers. 68% voted not. Oh my gosh, and I, to be honest, I expected this result. Yeah, I'm because... not too surprised to be honest, and I kind of agree. And I wouldn't want to see too many people on them because I think it'd be dangerous in the corners. It's not great. But no. on to the main talking point, which is... Why are some bikes so expensive? Now, I know this is a really broad question, but there's loads of different areas that we can discuss, isn't there, Alex? Yeah, that's right. And over the years, we've seen bikes become far more high-tech. And with that, the prices have increased. But there are a number of different reasons for this. There are. And we're going to start off with R&D, research and development. Companies and manufacturers spend a whole load of time and effort researching in to get those like hyper bikes and those high performing bikes. And it's not just by luck that they just turn up and they just happen to be the top the fastest and the lightest. No, it takes, well, it can take years. Years, yeah. And it can take manufacturers quite a long time to recover these costs. Yeah, and one thing to note is that all that technology can and will creep down to the cheaper ranges, but it does take a while, doesn't it? Yeah, but don't be shocked at this sort of expensive bikes because eventually, as we said, this technology will trickle down and it will benefit everyone. And over the years, we've done quite a few different videos comparing old top-end group sets to the cheaper but new group sets. And you know what? Nearly every time the cheaper new group sets come out on top. So technology is going to help everybody. It is indeed. We're going to go on to the next topic, aren't we? Yeah. Material costs. Now, a lot of the consumers out there will think that material takes most of the cost. And while those high-tech materials do come quite expensive, they don't take up the majority of the cost, do they? No, they don't. And labour is actually one of the biggest costs to consider because high-end carbon bikes with their intricate designs do require like a lot of human input to making them. And it can't just be automated with machines. Therefore, it's just an expensive process getting all these people to make them. Yeah, the more complicated the bikes, the more time-consuming it it is, I guess. The next point of topic is free market, isn't it? Because, that is right. well, there's a market for it. If people didn't buy these expensive bikes, then there wouldn't be a market. So the manufacturers or the distributors would have to drop that cost to get the sales. But we as a consumer are buying these bikes. So well, they keep selling them. They keep selling them. The retail cost of a bike does include a markup for the shop that sells it because, well, you've gone there and using their services, so they've got to make some profit out of that. Otherwise, well, the shop just wouldn't exist and you wouldn't be able to buy your bike. And also, it's why some direct-to-market brands can undercut shops that are selling bikes because they haven't got that middleman earning that bit of money. Exactly, it's a fair point, and we love to keep bike shops around, don't we, Alex? Yeah, we do. Yeah. Also, thinking about prestige of brands. Now, this is high value for any manufacturer out there. It's the brand, the look and the feel. It's the name on the bike that holds a lot of weight too, isn't it? So if you're buying a bike, you're also buying into the name upon that bike. So that marketing is quite an expensive area, yeah, isn't it? Brands invest heavily into their marketing and keeping their brands sort of prestigious and desirable for people. Yeah, I reckon it's about time we look at some numbers. Yeah, we do. I've actually done some quick maths for this, so Oof. I'm gonna need my laptop here. We've got- Go on, Alex. So, you love a bit of maths, I don't you? I love a bit of maths. So, I factored in some basic numbers here for the cost of owning about a 10,000 pound bike. So, okay. it's a hyper bike. And you know what, I've broken it down. If you include approximate maintenance costs over a four year period, I reckon you're nearly looking at 25 pence a mile. That's more than I thought. It's quite a lot. I mean, mm. I've been fairly sort of generous with some of the numbers, but it does give you a bit of a ballpark figure. So if you're doing a 100 mile ride, yeah. how, how much would that cost me? It could potentially cost you 25 pounds. Ah, but then we've got to look at the positive, Alex. Yeah. You know, the 25 pounds, it's cheaper than a bus ride. You, a lot cheaper than a taxi, that's for sure. A lot cheaper than a taxi. And it's enjoyable, it's fun, it's 
getting out on your it's your hobby. So yeah. I guess the value It's not a business investment, it's is it? It's not a business investment. But yeah. it is good fun. Oh. We do love bike riding, don't we, mate? Oh. And moving on to hot tech, and first up this week, we've got some all-terrain exploration oh, gear. Oh, oh. And this is a range of collaborations between the service cores and other brands, and they're launching with a brand new a gravel shoe. Pretty cool, eh? And it's got a unique colorway, and the materials feature reflective pigments in them. Safety first. I love these. They look absolutely awesome, don't they? They, they kind of look cool. like you've just stepped in a bit of mud, and you've left that green layer of mud at the bottom of your shoe. Why, it's green, isn't it, on the shoe? They look cool though. Yeah, they I'm do a big look fan. cool. Moving on though, they've also come up with a hip pack that is handmade and really easy accessible to put all your, your, well, your integrals. So your snacks. Oh, we love snacks. So if you want to access your snacks on the ride, then you can do that on your hip pack. And they also say that they're a lot more comfortable than rucksacks. Do you know why, Alex? Oh, tell me. Go well, on. well, from what I understand is that when you're using a rucksack on a bike, it's very much top heavy. So yeah, it, it can be quite uncomfortable to ride always with. Always so a sway back as well. And always yeah. a sway back. So the hip pack very much is a lot more comfortable when riding that rough terrain. But moving on from that hip pack, you've got ATG clothing. So that's the technical clothing that they're coming out with in 2021. So lots of really exciting stuff coming from uh, from from that collaboration, which I'm really excited to see. But up next, have you ever ridden into work and gone, do you know what? I just need to bring my coffee with me. No. Oh, okay. Well, if you had ever thought that, we've got a bike cup holder, and this goes on nearly any handlebar, means you can take your coffee with you, but- A bike cup holder? How's you are this gonna going need work? a sealed lid though, because it just clamps on the handlebars. Well, and it's got a little gripper inside, so your cup doesn't fall out, but- But what if you go over a pothole? Or a speed bump? or you break suddenly. Well, you're gonna have to be a, apply a bit of caution for that, aren't you? <laughs> I might have to try one. I'll have to try one. Yeah. There's a GCN tech challenge there somewhere. How much coffee can you keep in your cup on the way to work and be the fastest there? Maybe any penalty for losing too much coffee. Ollie's not gonna have a chance. He hasn't got far to ride though. No, true. He, he might get dropped. <laughs> Next up is the Sella Italia C59 saddle. That claims to be the lightest saddle in the entire world, sitting at 61 grams. Amazing. It actually looks quite cool. But do you know what the weight of 61 grams is, Alex? No, come on, give well, us I did a comparison. Some, uh, I did some research into this, and it's a razor can weigh 61 grams. Interesting. Yeah. But more importantly, a regular sized egg weighs 60 grams. You would not want to sit on the egg though, would you? No, it's a bit fragile, isn't it? The saddle would be a good idea though. And do you know why this saddle's so light? No? Oh, well. It's because it's made of carbon fiber. Carbon fiber rails, carbon fiber base, and the padding, well, there is none. What? There's no padding? No padding at all, and that's why it's so light. Yeah. I've got to say, I need a, a saddle with, with padding, mate. <laughs> Well, I'm quite intrigued and I've actually got one on order, so I'm intrigued to see what this turns up like. Oh, world's lightest saddle. Maybe then you will drop Ollie on a climb. <laughs> actually, no, you, you do that on the regular. This is the next bit of hot tech. What is it? The inflatable saddle cover. Oh, that looks cool, actually. It, look it looks really comfortable. I could do with one. <laughs> Why is it in our list though? Well, I featured it in because, do you know what? It's just a bit bizarre looking, isn't it? So how does it work then, Alex? Well, it's interesting you ask that because I've got a bit of a quote from their um, website. Oh. And it says, it uses the 3D airbag design with a gas bag internal air circulation to spread the hip's pressure, effective impact buffer hip, and the aftershock, excellent permeability. It is the best partner of the rider. Permeability. I do feel like a little bit of that has got lost in translation somewhat. You think? Yeah, just a bit. But yeah. how much is it raised on Kickstarter? Uh, I'm going to say 500 pounds. God, you're miles off. It's raised 40,000 pounds. 40,000 pounds? So I feel like they might be coming to a shop near you soon. Right, keep your eyes peeled. Up next is 2021 race bikes. We're going to kick off with green edges. Look at this. Yeah. 
In 2021, Green Edge are going to be using their brand new bike supplier, Bianchi, and they're going to be using a range of new bikes available. Yeah, they are. They're going to be using three bikes. They're going to start off with their Specialisma, then the Ultra, and also the Aquila. So you've got three different bikes to use from, don't you, Alex? Yeah, the Specialisma is their sort of lightweight GC bike with a frame about 750 grams. Oh, nice lightweight bike. The Ultra is their aerodynamic road race bike, ideal for those sort of sprint stages and breakaway stages, and their Aquila. Yeah, or Tequila. Yeah. No, we'll, we'll keep it Aquila. <laughs> yeah, so that's their time trial bike. That is it? their time trial bike. So we could see some uh, some some big time trials being won on those bikes, can't we? Yeah. And what about the colours? Oh. Yeah, the don't colours. forget the colours. They were going to be using the plaque, weren't they? Because it's said to be a bit lighter. But don't worry, because they're actually staying with the traditional Bianchi colour, which is Celeste. So uh, so for all you Bianchi fans out there, don't worry. Green Edge are going to be riding Celeste coloured bikes. Snacks of the week! Yeah, this time we've got Christmas snacks. Oh, wait. Lovely ladies sent us in these, uh, well, Christmas gifts, but they were addressed to Ollie, so, well, yeah. we're going to have to get rid of you, mate. You ready? Well, my name's not on Let's this. go. Hey. Nice to join us, mate. What else is going on? Well, we're at Snacks of the Week, and we thought this lovely lady has sent in some snacks addressed to you, so it was only right that... Well, you had your cake. Oh, yeah. Catherine, avid uh, GCN viewer and uh, also keen cyclist and baker, right, sent us in this. Check this out. That custom Christmas cake with our GCN round on the top. How amazing does that look? That is bloody Look at impressive. this. Yeah. Look at that. And that's not all. Well, sent in some tins as well. Yeah, you I've got some. on that side? Yeah, these are my ones. I've got shortbread in here. And in this one... Well, they're the Amaretti biscuits. So oh, yeah. There you go. Well, these are the shortbread. Look this at one. that. Oh, Little yeah. Christmas tree shortbread. Oh, chocolate truffles as well. Truffles? Yeah. These are all staying on my oh, side. Oh, they're on that side. Yeah, sorry. Right, well, thank you very much. I think, well, I'm going to open open this cake. I think, do you want a bit? Yeah, go on, Ed. Yeah. Bit. Who is here before me? Oh, I don't know. Some new guy. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's cutting. Do, do you want a bit? Yeah, go on, Ed. Yeah, nice. Oh, I'm just going to slice. Oh, you should have taken the ribbon off the edge. Oh, yeah, <laughs> It's nice first time cutting a cake, is it? Hang on. How big a piece do you want? I'll just small man watch my weight. Oh yeah? Yeah. Do you know what, mate? Do you know, I'll tell you, I've been... Oh, okay, I've, that, been, I've been looking forward to this all week, ever since we, you know, said they were sending it in. Good. Oh, well, thanks for coming anyway, mate. Cheers. <laughs> Look at that. Mm. Ollie was saving that. What? Oh, it's too late now. Don't worry mm. about it. Well, so, are you enjoying Snacks of the Week? Snacks of the Week. Thumbs up from you. My favourite part of the show. So, oh, isn't it? What's next? Well, Snacks of the Week's done now with this lot. <laughs> Cha-ching! It's now time for screw riding upgrades. Buy upgrades. And this is where you submit upgrades that you've made to your bikes, equipment, or cycling lives. Hold on, that's Ollie's quote. Oh, he's not here, it's all right. To win the ultimate prize. Yeah, this week's ultimate prize is the GCN Shadow Stand. So you're gonna be taking some killer bike fault photos with that. First up, the poll from last week. Yeah, let's check See. out the results. We've got Pellegrin MTB's Lotus Lookalike up against Burns Peugeot Renovation. Yeah, and uh, well, the results are quite close. Yeah. They're actually quite an even keel, actually, mate. Um, at 47% is Pellegrin's mountain bike Lotus Lookalike. Yeah. And taking the win for 52% is Burns Peugeot Renovation. So we're going to get that sent over to you. So keep an eye over on Facebook, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's right. So this week we have got Davzad's uh, Winter Beat bike, which is built around a hybrid frame they got last winter. Well, it said it was stolen recently, actually. Oh. Um, but the silver lining was that he could get another bike. So he sourced all the parts, um, an old specialized Cyrus frame, handlebars, tires, fabric saddle, SRAM, derailleurs, and well, he's invested a lot of time into this. I love what the do you look make of that it? bike. It's it looks cool, awesome. It? Yeah. But he, Davzad, is up against the Gump. Now, the Gump is from Louis, Louisville in Kentucky. Yeah. I've never been to Louisville, have you? No, I haven't. No, but I'd like to go, so um, so one day. Uh, half of the fun I have with cycling is wrenching on my bikes, so why not upgrade the bike shop with the beer fridge, TV, cowhide rug, and park tool collection? The wife 
has, has a hard time getting me out of the basement. And I can definitely this see why. Yeah. Look at that. It's like a lounge slash bike work. I love that. And I love the color of the lighting. Yeah, it's even got Ollie on the telly. Oh. Yes. Right, we might need to change that, but um, uh, but other than that, it all looks really good. That's impressive. Yeah, I love that. So it's not up to us. No, of it's course, not. It's up to you guys on the GCN app. So head over there and get voting. Winner, don't forget, will win the ultimate prize. Shadow stand. It's now time for the bike vault. How does everyone get their bikes into the bike vault, Alex? Well, they upload them to the GCN app into the bike vault yes, section. Yes, they do. And we get to vote if they're nice or super nice. And then we read the vote. Do you know what? Right. You've rung that more than I've rung it since I've worked here. Mate, I would love reading that about it. It's been so long! Right, right, let's get stuck into them bike vault bikes. First up, Neil Bauer 1. And he's got a... What is this? There's a Rally Sprint. 1983 this is from. Wait, 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 wait. wait. That's definitely a uh, super nice. Gotta judge it a little bit first. Well, I'm pre I'm preempting the, uh, the fact do you that know, he's gonna be... Do you know nice. the bike vault specifications? Yes. Okay, well, I'll take that. So it's got the valves lined up. <laughs> it's presented nicely. You've oh, done gosh, it super I didn't, nice. I didn't, yeah. Valves lined up. Cranks set at 45 degrees. Yeah. It's very clean. It's yeah. white. Yeah. I like white bike. I like a white bike. So it's got it a good correctly. background. Saddle. You judged it correctly, I yeah. think. Yeah, I'll go with super nice. So that's good. I'm happy with that. High Just... five. Off. Oh. Right, next one. Next up, you go for this. The next up, we've got a specialised turbo Creo Comp Carbon. It's sent in by Anderley Jordan. First and... e-bike that we've had on for quite a while now. That's why I picked this one out. But not, well, sub-optimal presentation, I'm going to say. I'm, I'm going to agree with you there. Yeah. Hasn't really thought about the background. We've got a garage door. <laughs> yeah. Cranks aren't set up and aligned. Wheels uh, not aligned. Valves aren't aligned. Pictures not straight on. Pictures. Oh my gosh. I'm sorry. It's just a nice. Jordan, it's going to be a nice. It's a nice. Next one. Next up, uh, Marty Carism 23202. Yeah, keep, uh, keep hashing <laughs> that one up. <laughs> yeah. yeah, this is the Ventum NS1. And I got to say, it looks like a really nice bike. I've never ridden cool the Ventum, bike. but no. it, it looks really cool. It looks like a, a definite um, super bike. But a few emissions. There are a few emissions. Not there. in the correct gear. No. Tires we're not, and wheels. We're not in biggie smalls, are no. we? No. Saddle bags. We've still got his accessories on. The, the cranks are the wrong yeah. way wrong, wrong, wrong way round. Yeah, the wrong way round. Um, we've got a saddle bag with the light on the back. For a picture, we've got to take that off. Yeah, we? we've got to take it off. So again, it's a nice, it's, unfortunately. It's a nice. I don't Sorry. get to ring the bell. Next up, we've I don't got... think I can say this name. I struggled on the last one. I'll give it a go. Les Tansen Dinja. Les Tansen Dinja. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Crisp Titanium Road Tie. This is cool. This is a cool bike. Now, now people are going to say that this background is quite messy, but I think it adds to it. It gives a bit of flavour, doesn't it? It's it got does. the graffiti look. It's a titanium bike with carbon forks, yet it Saddle looks beautiful, still. It, it does look very good. I think... That saddlebag looks clean though. That yeah, it does one. look clean. Mm. Still got uh, bo multiple bottles on the bike. Plen plenty of uh, spares on that bike. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to give it a... I think it's nice, but I do think I could get a super nice. Right. Okay. Oh, that's, our last, that's our last entry for this. No! Do you know what? That went quick, didn't that it? That went really quick. I've got to say though, Bike Vault is always the best bit of the show, so keep sending in your bikes. All you have to do is upload them onto the GCN app. Everyone else gets to vote on them, and we pick out the favourites to go through on the show. Yeah. Right, that's it for the GCN Tech Show. It has been amazing. I loved every minute of it. Good. The, uh, the snap bit was my absolute favourite, so thank you, Catherine, for sending those in. But if you need any more Christmas gifts, head over to the GCN shop, obviously. Yes, don't forget, head over to the GCN shop. You can get yourself some epic Christmas gifts for all your cycling loved ones and some core cool collection. That's enough of that for this week. You all right there, mate? Oh, you know, I just had the worst dream. I dreamt that Hank came and did the tech show. It was a reality for me. What? Yeah. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you have, give it a big thumbs up.
He ate my snacks and everything. Yeah, bizarre. He just came in and started doing what he wanted.